Are current carb-heavy dietary guidelines racist? Okay, I'm gonna claim the audacity of that question off the bat, especially given that it's coming out of the mouth of a lucky-to-be-lean white male. I am to racial and ethnic diversity like white rice is to spicy. But I'm gonna ask you to bear with me on this one because I have some important and scientifically legitimate points to make, starting with a shocking statistic. 57% of black women in the United States have obesity. That is substantially higher than the general population or white women at around 40%. 57% of black women have obesity. In fact, it's no secret that, in general, rates of obesity and obesity-related chronic diseases are higher in black and non-white Hispanic populations in the United States as compared to white people. But then the question obviously is, well, why? Why is this the case? There are several conventional explanations, those related to genetics, socioeconomic status, access to healthy food, and behavioral factors. And some of these have some legitimacy. However, they paint a pessimistic picture that unmodifiable biological factors, like genetics, or seemingly intractable social, environmental, and behavioral influences are perpetuating and exacerbating healthcare disparities. Take an example, an 18-month 2015 randomized control trial that was comparing the effects of a standard healthy eating guidelines, weight loss diet, with 50% of calories from carbs in white and African-American women. And the study concluded that the African-American women lost less weight because they had lower levels of physical activity, basically because in the calories in, calories out equation, they just moved less, thus explaining the health disparity with the behavioral characteristic. And honestly, just to be transparent with you for a sec, when I read this study, I have to admit my stomach did a somersault given the implications. However, another more hopeful explanation for this health disparity with respect to obesity is the presence of modifiable biological factors. In particular, the insulin response to dietary carbohydrates and sugar. And in this video, I want to discuss a new human randomized control trial that was just published in the journal Obesity, as well as a published commentary that colleagues and I wrote, and which I'll also link below in case you wanna do the actual reading. It was all about this trial arguing for its tremendous importance with respect to fighting for a more metabolically nuanced and just future for nutrition. But before I get to this randomized control trial, I want to arm you with important metabolic background. It's already been documented that black adults have greater insulin response to carbs and insulin resistance as compared to white adults, even after controlling for body weight and body fat distribution. And similar results have been found in black and white children. Now, given that a larger insulin response in response to carbohydrates predisposes to storing fuel calories as fat, and instigates increased hunger, decreased energy expenditure, and ultimately obesity, we should ask the obvious question. Could a reduced carbohydrate diet, which stimulates less insulin secretion, particularly improve the effectiveness of weight loss dietary treatments in particular racial or ethnic groups with insulin dynamics that are mismatched to our current high carb, high glycemic load diets? Maybe. Now, in this new RCT, what the researchers did is they randomly assigned 69 black women with obesity to low-fat, 20% fat, or low-carb, 20% carb, weight loss diets for 10 weeks with a subsequent weight maintenance period to examine energy expenditure. And they documented several really interesting results. First, among participants with insulin resistance, there was substantially greater fat loss on the low carbohydrate versus the low fat diet, with 4.9 kilograms loss on the low carb diet versus only 2.1 on the low fat diet. So twice as much fat loss on the low carb diet. And second, among participants with insulin resistance, total energy expenditure decreased substantially 
following weight loss on the low fat diet, but not on the low carb diet. Total energy expenditure dropped 230 calories per day on the low fat diet, but did not decrease on the low carb diet. So simply put, the low fat diet slowed metabolism with weight loss, whereas the low carb diet did not, or to a far lesser extent. The implication here is that the lower carb diet provided a profound metabolic advantage with respect to maintaining weight loss. Now, I want to return to and reinforce the proposed mechanism at hand here. According to the framing model, the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity, the rapid rise in blood glucose after a high glycemic load meal raises insulin and raises the insulin to glucagon ratio. And this hormonal response shifts fuel partitioning, calorie partitioning towards fat deposition, leaving fewer calories for the brain and other metabolically active organs. And as a consequence downstream of that, hunger increases or energy expenditure decreases as compensatory mechanisms to reestablish an energy homeostasis. And for individuals, with a tendency to secrete large amounts of insulin, whether this is an inherited or acquired phenomenon, the carbohydrate insulin model predicts that higher carbohydrate diets would exacerbate these metabolic events, leading to a vicious cycle of high insulin, fat deposition, and hunger. Now, conventional behavioral weight loss targets eat less and move more. And it fails to address the metabolic drivers of obesity we just explained, making long-term weight loss and maintenance unsustainable for many people, especially those populations with higher insulin secretion. Now, from this perspective, racial disparities in weight that might first appear to be behavioral in origin arising in the context of conventional guidelines that suggest consuming about half of calories from carbohydrates well, they could instead arise from underlying biological differences with respect to insulin secretion. Otherwise, and provocatively but reasonably stated, conventional advice around eating a one-size-fits-all, my-plate, balanced diet might surreptitiously, metabolically disadvantage particular groups of people, including Black Americans and Black women, perpetuating healthcare disparities in obesity and obesity-related diseases that is often blamed on behavioral factors, which perpetuate stigma. Additionally, I'll highlight that other important factors that are important, like socioeconomic and cultural factors, can operate in the framework of this biological perspective. This metabolic biological perspective with respect to the carbohydrate insulin model can act as a convergence point and a practical productive framework to consider how obesity develops. Thus, in addition to enhancing treatment efficacy of dietary interventions, this biologically oriented perspective may help close healthcare disparities and lessen implicit stigma. Okay, in closing, I just want to acknowledge that these are not easy conversations to have, particularly because of the cultural dimensions of diet. And to be very clear, I'm not saying that certain racial or ethnic groups shouldn't eat carbs or that carbs are bad per se. In fact, race and ethnicity are relatively poor predictors of underlying biological differences, the ones that actually matter, here being insulin resistance and insulin response to carbs. Nevertheless, we can still acknowledge that for whatever upstream reasons, be they social, be they genetic, be they cultural, our current carb-heavy conventional way of eating disadvantages certain populations, including racial and ethnic groups, more than others. And this can perpetuate stigma and healthcare disparities. So I return to the question, are current carb-heavy dietary guidelines racist? Hopefully you have a better understanding of where I'm coming from. Hopefully you got something productive from this video. Honestly, it was one I was a little bit nervous to make, but I do think it's really important in a discussion we need to have.